two minutes into the day of Sunday, August 21st, 2016. This is the next segment and the first segment of uh, Big Bang Theory L's uh, BTS vlog for the 79th episode. Yeah, we're starting the 79th episode. So this is, uh, this is our first clip. I think I have to say it again sometimes to get it registered in my mind. And uh, to make sure I said it properly. Uh, I'm not on the research desk right now. I'm uh, at in the front room. As I said before, I got this stuff, uh, uh, the front room here more organized. It's uh, been repurposed. I'm actually uh, doing um, the oceanographic and uh, atmospheric research here. I've got some of the uh, information being pulled out the satellite uh, from here. Then I go outside and I'll talk a little bit more outside, but we do a little bit of a vlog outside and talk about what I'm doing outside as well uh, in terms of uh, the research project uh, but this is right to the right to my right here this is uh, one system I have dedicated to uploading and the one next to it I have is a second editing bay I'm gonna work on a third editing bay uh, and there's a room off to my left here uh, that's gonna be where the third editing bay is gonna be in uh, but that uh, uh, is something that will, will be remains to be done. It's a project that's going to be in the works, but uh, not specifically uh, within the next month or so. Right now, in the next month or so, uh, I'll be working on Mars Alpha. Mars Alpha is going to be the, sort of the next next main project, and uh, yeah, so that's that's going to take up most of the schedule, and then. Um, well, I sort of have to move on from there. Uh, anyways, I'm just about 15 minutes off of uh, from going outside to do another three or four hours worth of uh, observations. For uh, this is begins my observation again uh, 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 for weather, for the cloud patterns, and doing atmospheric physics. Uh, atmospheric physics. Uh, yep. Yeah, said it right. Uh, what I do is I use my observation outside, compare it to what I get over here. That will sort of give me a direction as to where to go next. And as I said, bit by bit, you go out, you find, you, you feel your way around, you collect information, you go back, you sort, you come back, you sort the information, and decide where to go next based on what you've collected. Uh, so it's like starting all over again. I'm starting a new level of project. Uh, I did it last year. Did accomplished the goals I set out to do last year. This year is I intend to extend it further. I've already started moving into new territory this year, so it's working well. It's in terms of what I consider to be progress. It, it, I am making and did indeed making progress. So the question is now: Is I going to sort of step, start stepping forward and seeing how much further I can sort of push my ways in here? So. Uh, yeah, and I will uh, talk to you when I get outside in about uh, 15, tw uh, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. I'll be outside and do a uh, vlog out there uh, for the BTS vlog, and I'll start the OR vlog as well uh, out there. So, anyways, I will see you uh, in just about 20, 30 minutes. All right, bye. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory House BTS vlog. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is 23 hours and 23 minutes into the day 
of Sunday, August 21st, 2016. And we're out here vlogging uh, in our uh, in my spot that I do to observe, uh, do the uh, uh, atmospheric physics observations. Uh, that's where I am now. Not much is actually going on. Just going to see you confirming that uh, there is a bit of a break in the weather. It's, and the thing is, this one track, it's, it's coming up, it's coming all the way from Texas, from the Gulf of Mexico. That's where it originates. Um, and it uh, makes a diagonal uh, across the United States up to, uh, uh, up to, to where we are in Toronto and Canada. Uh, and then uh, goes over Lake Ontario in terms of the top part of Lake Ontario and out uh, through Quebec and uh, the St. Lawrence River out to um, I think basically in Newfoundland and uh, uh, the North Atlantic. That's where it sort of seems to everything seems to coalesce and uh, gather. Uh, it's, it, it's an interesting look from the satellite view. It's also interesting from out here as well, uh, matching up what I see on the satellite with what uh, I see in my observations. So that's definitely uh, one of the pluses. The minus is that it's long hours. A lot of times I'm out here till two, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, so and sometimes you look for something. Sometimes there's nothing to see. It's just uh, listening to the wind and. Uh, feeling the temperature, is it hot, is it cold, is it humid, is it dry? Uh, these are the different things that are, are, are your kind of your indicators. And then when you go back and you, you take a look at the data, you sort of correlate the data with how you felt uh, in terms of your, the actual observations. And uh, this gives you a sort of a feel for uh, what's going on in the physics. So it's, it's a definitely an exciting thing, but it is. I'm not out here. It's, this is not 20 minutes later. I said I was going to be out here, in, you know, in the next segment, uh, uh, 20 minutes later. But it's not 20 minutes later. It's uh, significantly later. Why? Yeah, I had some problems with the computers, and uh, and particularly the computer that I was using to to download everything with. And so, uh, as I began to uh, fix up the system, uh, it took me just about uh, 10 10:30 to get out here uh, to, to sort of get my bearings. And then uh, went inside. I realized it was cold out because it's about 60 66 degrees Fahrenheit out right now. Uh, the humidity is down low, so you know it's it's it, it, it's a little chilly out. So I've got a little I got a jacket on. I still have shorts on, but uh, uh, I've got my jacket on. It's, <laughs> this is sort of compensate. So it's like a a hoodie jacket and shorts. So that's kind of the way uh, the dressing the dress for tonight. So. Um, I'm probably gonna be out here till at least one, two o'clock in the morning. You know, depends on uh, what happens. I want to see if anything, because I found that there is a changeover in the weather just about every three hours. So if I got out here about ten o'clock, if I stay out till like one, two, uh, I should. Uh, there's a changeover if there's any change changeover because there is a uh, this this whole line thing and this this line of of heavy moisture coming up from the Gulf. Uh, which is generated by, by two, actually two tropical storms. One is K in the Pacific, and the other is uh, Fe, uh, Tropical Storm Fe in the Atlantic. They're generating a lot of this moisture, a lot of the, sort of the, the, sort of the warm air, the, 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 the very, uh, very humid, hot, humid air, and it's sending it up that line there. And right now we're experiencing a bit of a break, and what's happening in, in this break, the line is still there, but it's now very thin. In this break, uh, we have a system coming in from the uh, northwest, basically uh, through uh, from the Alaska all the way through from from the tip of Alaska through the Arctic, through the Northwest Territories, down into the pro uh, uh, the Prairie Provinces, dips down a little bit below uh, the Great Lakes, and then comes back up again. This is what's give, bringing in the cold air that sort of gives us a break from the heat. The, that we've, that we've been experiencing for the last couple of weeks. The sun, the activity on the sun is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think I've got, to, I've got to sit down and do some categorization on the actual type of events that are going on on the sun because there's more than one type and there's a, a variety of different dynamics that are going on. Uh, so I've got to sit down and correlate these things and correlate them uh, it, with the actual uh, uh, atmospheric physics, see how because uh, I know from Project, Project Maven, Maven uh, that's around Mars, that the solar uh, dynamics, the solar uh, atmosphere, does have a significant impact on the climate, on the atmosphere of Mars. So the thing is, the same situation, the same dynamic, should be occurring here.
although it should be a little bit damped because we have uh, the Earth's magnetos magnetosphere. The magnetosphere should be damping uh, a, a, to a significant degree uh, the effects, the negative effects that you have when you're dealing with uh, the solar uh, activity, the, 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 the coronal amount of suggestions, these uh, different uh, particle storms that are coming around, uh, these things all have an impact on the atmosphere and uh, it would be interesting to see how these things can actually correlate. So, uh, in our next segment, uh, I'll get back to you and then we'll sort of sit down and, uh, you know, <laughs> get things going a little bit more. All right, uh, I'll see you in the next segment. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the next segment of Big Bang Theory Hour's BTS vlog. Uh, I'm inside now, obviously. I'm I'm vlogging in the place where I really haven't vlogged before in a while. So uh, let me give you a time and date stamp. It's three hours and uh, thirty six minutes into the day of uh, Monday, August twenty second, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, it's almost like oh, yeah, just about 3.30 in the morning. Today is pretty productive, but it also got very cold outside. It's now down to 59 degrees, so uh, the Arctic front is starting to come in. This, is, this, this system that's bringing the cold in is coming down from the Arctic. Uh, but it's coming down actually across the Arctic because it, com it comes down from the tip of Alaska. Uh, uh, across the um, Northwest Territories, and that's where it comes into in, into us. That's what we're getting right now, and it's it's, it's pretty cold, uh, considering that it's still uh, August. And, uh, what? Just a week ago, it was uh you know nine degrees plus, so that's a pretty good thing. Uh, <laughs> it, it gives you a break from the heat, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the kind of the way things go. Uh, the the research day is going very well, um, making progress uh, in manners I haven't really expected. But uh, yeah, things are working out uh, pretty well. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm tired because I've got a shipment coming in tomorrow morning, waiting for delivery. Uh, I'm. Well, configuring a tablet for somebody, uh, from for for a customer, and then uh, I have to get that out to them in the next couple of days anyway. So uh, I am tired. Uh, it's been a long day, and this is the way it goes. Uh, seven days a week. There's no real breaks uh, in terms of days off. So you do work uh, uh, seven days a week, uh, and my typical work day is about twelve hours. So uh, it's this is three thirty now. One would assume if it's a twelve hour day that I started at three o'clock in the afternoon, but that's not true. I started. Uh, I actually woke up around noon. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, around that time, around noon. So if you add uh, another three hours to the day, that's uh, uh, a fifteen hour day. So not bad. Uh, on to the phys uh, back to, not onto but back to uh, some of the physiology that we had been talking about before uh, it's been about uh, a good two months now a good three months I began having the uh, drinking the tea in May uh, I began uh, making the tea for myself rather than buying the powder stuff I started making the, the iced teas. Uh, this is uh, primarily a, a, a it's, it's, it's an herbal type of Chinese tea, uh, and it's got a lot of good nutrients in it. And uh, so you know, I also know from my chemistry that it takes a while for the body to bring things in to adjust to it. And I real I looked at it because I've been having different types of teas, making different uh, variations of it, and uh, that typically within two to maybe three weeks. Uh, this is when the changeover occurs. You have you start seeing some of the effects, and as the effects occur, you take note of them. But the overall effect over the last few months uh, is that my energy has improved. I've been able to do longer hours. the The fatigue that I used to have 
uh, is still there to a certain degree, but it's not there the way it was. It's not as bad as it used to be. And so I'm able uh, with this tea now to, produce, to, to, to do more during the day, more productive during the day, uh, well, by day anyways, in my waking period. Uh, and I'm pushing ahead faster than I was without the tea. And so th this for me is a good sign that that the tea does work. That there are that the there is a benefit to the tea as compared to let's say other drinks. Because uh, I had other drinks, the, the other drinks so I did have some energy, but not the energy I had now. And so I the the switch over the change over to uh, the having milk tea. Uh, instead of my uh, uh, instead of the powder drinks as my main drink, I think that is, has certainly improved uh, my physiology in terms of how it works, how it functions. And I'm gonna keep taking a look and sort of seeing, you know, if 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 what type of improvements do occur with this, and if there are any other drawbacks to it. So. Uh, I'll let you know, I'll sort of, you know, as uh, I keep drinking the tea, if I notice things that happen, I'll come back and I'll talk to you and say, okay, this happened and that happened, or this didn't happen, or that didn't happen, in terms of uh, what to expect and what not to expect. Uh, so, I think that it, 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 it takes a couple months for the, 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 the uh, well, actually a couple of weeks on my physiology for the tea to have some degree of an effect. The longer term effect happens over months, and so this is what we're sort of seeing now. I'm in the two, three month period now, and I am starting to notice that I do have a better uh, um, energy stamina st stamina during the day in terms of my weight, the number of hours I can put in. So as of today, I did 15 hours, and I barely even noticed the 15 hours. So. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not in a really bad state. I am tired. I'm gonna probably fall asleep right away as soon as I lie down. But in terms of how I actually feel, it's not bad. So I will see you in a couple hours uh, when I get up again, and we'll go from there. And I might get up. I'll probably get up again. Uh, let's see, it's four almost 4 o'clock now. I'm pr pretty sure, let's say, 4 hours. I'll probably get up around 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's my usually my first 4 hours of sleep. And after 4 hours, I wake up, have to get up some, to do something. Now, I may end up staying up because that's between 8 and 12 is when the delivery period is. So I might end up staying up, just waiting for the delivery and then sleeping after the delivery comes. I'll have to sort of wait and see and play it by ear in terms of uh, how I feel, what my body is like, and, you know, just basically take it from there. Anyways, uh, I will see you in the uh, next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory L's uh, BTS Log. All right, take it easy. Well, hello, everybody. It is not necessarily good board. Good morning, but... I'm up for the delivery. It is 10 hours and 15 minutes into the day of Monday, August 22nd, 2016. Almost at 2014. Uh, it was 4 o'clock last night when I went, well, it was 4 uh, o'clock 4 when I went to bed just about. It's 10 o'clock now. That's <sighs> just about six hours of sleep. So I haven't finished sleeping yet. But I do have to wait for the delivery. And then, uh, so that's between na uh, now and one o'clock in the afternoon. It's about three hours of waiting. And after I finish the three hours, then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to bed again. So uh, that's where we are right now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, waiting for deliveries. That's not often a fun thing. What you get in the mail is good. Uh, uh, you know, this is uh, 
the package and tablet that I'm uh, configuring for a customer, and that's a good thing. It's uh, something to look forward to, but the actual waiting part is uh, not so fun, so uh, right now I'm going to just watch a little IPTV and uh, go from there. Mm. <sighs> and then go back, well, I can't go, from, go from there, go from back to bed. We'll see what the day brings, uh, well, in terms of, uh, because that's going to, this is going to cause my day to shift again. Uh, when I delay the sleep like that, and so, you know, basically, uh, we'll go back to bed for another couple hours. What's going to end up happening? Excuse me for a minute. What's going to end up happening is that uh, uh, my day when I go to bed and stuff like that is going to kind of shift a little bit. And so that will put me into a later... Uh, time spent, but although uh, the ob observation should uh, uh, s uh, fix my, 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 my sleep schedule, because I have to go outside, I go outside at, an op at a fixed time, so that would impact my sleeping schedule. Uh, vlogging in all conditions. Yeah, well, other vloggers would have avoided doing this and <clears throat> not vlogging at this particular period of time, but not me. Uh, uh, vlogging as much as I can um, in all conditions to, so, so that you can see, to see uh, uh, the ups and downs, the, uh, the good, the bad, and uh, everything else. So it gets you really, you know, behind the scenes, so. Yeah, the uh, uh, observations I do outside, uh, usually between, uh, uh, typically it's supposed to be between 10 and 3 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the evening and 3 o'clock in the morning, this uh, our time span is about 5 hours, uh, of going back and forth between uh, the computer uh, through pulling the images off the satellite and sort of figuring what's going on uh, uh, with uh, the overall conditions and going outside and seeing uh, what actually shows up and how it actually appears. But the thing is, is that there is a 30-minute a, a discrepancy. And what I've been found is that, that I've been able to accom accommodate for the discrepancy. But I've also been able to, to uh, deal with uh, the v various different layers of the of uh, of the cloud system of, of the uh, atmosphere, because although one layer influences influences the other, they don't necessarily appear to be the exact same thing. So what you see in the sky is not necessarily see which is not necessarily what you see. From the satellite, you know, it really depends on, on, you know, what your. Uh, it really depends on the combination of images uh, from the lower. You want to get the lower cloud layers. You also want to get some of the middle of the cloud cloud layers. Uh, but there's also influence that comes in from uh, water vapor from from the heat that's in the system. Um, the thermal imaging is extremely important because uh, it tells you where how, how heat works within the system. So let's say you're studying global warming or or, or, or what they call climate change, and you want to determine if it's man-made or not. You want to sort of follow the heat. You want to observe the heat. You want to see how the heat interacts with the environment. Uh, and that way you can sort of determine, you know, well, okay, when is when is the heat increasing? When is the heat decreasing? You know, where is it, you know, where does the pool? You know, in thermodynamics, a lot of times heat pools into different places. Uh, it, it forms these uh, thermal pools. 
Uh, sometimes you also have uh, uh, the same thing with uh, with cold air. Cold air becomes pools as well. But you also have uh, you actually have currents in between the, the cold and the hot, it's like a stream. And you have hot air going into the cold air, but also you have cold air rushing to hot. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily make sense because it's always supposed to go, to, it's always supposed to be going to, uh, it's always supposed to be uh, uh, heading in the direction of uh, of hot to cold, right? You know, you, as you have the loss of energy. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to flow. What it's supposed to, in terms of textbook understanding and the actual reality, are in many cases two separate things. Uh, the flow of heat and energy described in the textbook is, is it, it, you know, it it is. A general thing it doesn't, it doesn't describe all cases in the textbook. It describes in many cases a very simple understanding. It's your sort of called your base understanding. But then what happens is when you get into the dynamic environment, things become a lot more complicated, and uh, they don't necessarily match up with the textbook. And this is where, uh, as a scientist. You go in and try to sort of figure out what's going on, how 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 you go from the basic to the more complex, how one relates to the other, and this is how you begin to put together an understanding. And not you don't get a full understanding, but you get an understanding uh, uh, of what's actually occurring out there. And th this is the the lure. This is the what drives you. Uh, because you you are going into the unknown. You are going to uh, uh, even if it's just unknown to yourself, you, you, that that's what you're doing. You're pushing your boundaries. So, uh, this is what pushes, uh, particularly a scientist who is is a more curious type of person, into these different areas. And I'm talking about uh, because there are a variety of levels, types of scientists. There are the scientists who stick within the known, and their jobs are are to uh, you know to be exact, to be right on, and uh, to make sure that everything, you know, you dot the I's and T's in terms of product quality, right? You're, there are scientists who are working in chemical factories or already working to design and develop a product. Their jobs are to be exact. Their jobs are to sure the product quality control is uh, dead bang on so you have something that's good that's coming out. But if you're exp doing exploration, you're uh, an exploration scientist, your job is to go into the unknown, and you don't know what's out there. You don't understand what's what's ahead of you, uh, and that's the whole point of doing exploration is to go out into the unknown. But you do have to sort of set your base up. You have to have your knowns there as well, uh, and you start from here what you know, and then you start moving out inch by inch or bit by bit into the unknown, and you try to sort of in many ways connect back to what you do know. That's how it works. You sort of, oh, you should go out there, you should go to the unknown. Is there something that's familiar? Do you think you see some of the basics within what you're doing? You know, what, what, what you consider to be the basics. And if you can start making some con some connections with like that, that's your first steps in. But of course, the more you stay out there, the more you do your observations, the more you take your notes. Uh, 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 this will start filling in the blanks in between what you do know and what you don't know. So you can make some individual threads in terms of between the basics and what you see, but the thing is, what do you see further? What else is out there? And this is not always apparent, and this is the part, sort of bringing in collecting the information, is what takes a fair bit of time, so... Anyways, I'm gonna leave this here for now. Uh, I think we'll, uh, this will be it for, for for this episode, anyways, for the uh, 79th episode. And so I will see you in the next episode, which will be in a few hours. Uh, so see you then. All right.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.